Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0 .90 Beta. In this episode, I originally said I was going to try the Molnia Orbit contract, but I've left Orson Kerman in orbit around Kerbin for a long time now, and I think it's, it's, it is time for us to retrieve that particular Kerbal. Let us rescue him, and in the process perhaps test a new system. Now that we have a larger Telamon rocket, uh, we, we originally launched a Kerbal into orbit using two boosters, now we have four, and we also are using the, the pseudo centaur stage, the RL-10 uh, stage there. So now with that more efficient engine we can carry a much heavier capsule and service module, which you see here. And in fact, uh, it's so heavy that I needed to put an Agena avionics package here as well as here. Um, not the best arrangement, but we have to use the Agena one because of the electric charge draw, which is four times less that of the Able Delta avionics package. And if we're going to use the Avi uh, Agena one, we can't put the Able Delta on top because, uh, well, because it's not useful and of course it's gonna have its electric charge draw so don't want it there but remember we had that uh, heat conduction problem and so now we're gonna test whether the parachute was conducting heat to the capsule to a degree that was unacceptable I think it was the antennae that were doing it but uh, we'll, we'll have to see now the parachute is connected directly to the command pod without the able delta avionics package in between uh, we do not have any other antennae on the pod itself, however we do have antennae on the service module, so that's important. You can see the solar panel right here, and that is because perhaps, perhaps, this system could take a Kerbal over to the moon. Uh, that would be a very risky journey, and we would need a free return trajectory. We would I don't think we could get into orbit around the moon with just this, just what Delta V we have here. But, uh, yep. That is a thought, so I wanted to make sure we have all the communication, solar panel and etc. in order to do that. We are not putting a Kerbal in this time because, of course, we are trying to rescue the Kerbal and it will be the avionics packages that will bring all this to that Kerbal. I need to action group uh, the commutatrons. Let me do that right now. Okay, so as you can see, four, four kilonewton thrusters on the service module will handle things. We are using MMH N204. I thought that was uh, not allowed for us just yet. In other words, we hadn't unlocked that, but it seems that it's unlocked. Um, and so I've reconfigured the, the RCS thrusters, if we could see that. They're so tiny, these RCS thrusters. Uh, MMH N204. Uh, I think that's the best tech level I've got any. Oh no, we've got tech level 3 as well. So well, a little bit more delta V from that. Uh, tech level three here, MMH and two or four on those one kilonewton thrusters. One curiosity um, with the RCS thrusters, I see here thruster power 0.275, and uh, and all that. This should be less. Uh, if you take a look at the one half thruster blocks, they're also 0.275, and these are also 0.275. I'm pretty sure these should be one quarter of these. Um, either I've done something wrong or something has done something wrong. I don't know. Uh, I don't remember changing anything about those. I, I haven't been doing much in the config files in this series, so I don't know. It seems like an uh, if, uh, iffy thing to me. We'll see. Okay, uh, we've got these right now, and we'll see if we're getting overpowered RCS or something like that. All right, um, I don't really need that kind of RCS power. I've uh, as this is configured, these are actually on the center line, by the way. So hopefully that'll be all right. Um, yep. All right. So RL10 stage, and then the rest of the rocket is exactly the same. Nothing about it changed. Okay. So, I think that's all the best parts spoken for. Let's try and get this into orbit to rescue Orson Kerman. But first I need to change our launch site because otherwise we're not going to be able to reach him. Even with all, well, I guess with all this Delta V we probably could correct the inclination, but I don't want to do that. 
All right, let's go to the tracking station. Okay, so here we are, and we want... I, I never know how to pronounce that. Kuro? Koro? Koro? I think Koro comes close. Hopefully. All right, so uh, that is our launch site. I've got these other contracts here that I'm going to have to pay attention to. But our Kerbal is in a high orbit, remember? 1,100 kilometers or so. So we're going to have to reach him there. Okay, so lots to do. I think we should probably time warp a bit. Let's get into daylight. It is a rather tall rocket, isn't it? It's uh, it's a little bit worrying, actually, this rocket right now. We'll see. Um, yeah, oh, uh, one other point. I did delete some stock parts, so that's why these tanks are untextured, uh, because they were using the stock textures. So just ignore that. I'll, I'll probably delete them from the... But it's not a big priority to delete them from the, from the configs. Okay, here we are on the launch pad. Note that the max thrust to weight ratio on on the launch stages is around four, a little bit over four, but but still uh, reasonable if we were trying to launch a Kerbal on top of this. So that has been taken care of. And now before electric charge goes away, let's put SAS on. Let's get throttle up. It's gonna be a slow launch because thrust to weight ratio off the launch pad is not very high. But let's go. Okay. You know, I honestly don't know what causes the, the lag in this game. Right now, KSP isn't even maxing out one of my cores. Uh, None of my cores is up to a hundred percent, and and uh, the GPU, I, as I understand it, uh, KSP is right now not a GPU intensive sort of thing. I've got two gig of uh, video RAM. I've got twelve gig of uh, regular RAM. So I don't know. I have no idea what the limiting factor on this thing is. Hopefully version 1.0 is going to have a lot of improvements on that. Streamlining and not loading all the textures at the beginning of the program start. But we'll have to see how that all works out. Ooh, sound drop off. Anyway, uh, so I do think that I'll be starting over in 1.0 because I wanted to add Kerbal construction time and also, what was it, uh, test flight. But that's not going to be for a while. And maybe I'll just continue this series for a little bit into the point where 1.0 is has all the mods completely updated just so that I can get a good ways into this we have to land a Kerbal on the moon at the very least and send something to Mars so I'll, I'll keep on with this series for for a decent while longer but I do intend to start a new Realism Overhaul series with Kerbal Construction Time, as well as Test Flight. Well, the main suspense is how the capsule will handle through the region of heating, which is, as usual, about 30 to 40 kilometers. Okay, here we go. We're approaching the point where we're interested to see what happens. Get a read on the capsule without my ears blowing out. Its temperature is going pretty high, I have to say. Of course, as others will mention, 
that is why they had uh, shielding on the cap over the capsule for like the Apollo missions. The the escape launch escape system was attached to the shield, and they only discarded that after they passed through this area. We've already got some overheating on the decouplers, but I'm still gonna go to 40 degrees here. Now I really don't know what the descent periapsis should be when this descent mode is activated because I've I haven't used it, this descent mode much. So I'm gonna have to test that out. We'll probably there's a high probability that I'm going to bounce off of the atmosphere on this just because uh, I'm probably going to be too conservative on on my descent profile. But we'll see. Goal is simply not to fry or otherwise damage the Kerbal. Okay, looks like temperatures are going down. So anyway, that's successful. We certainly don't need the avionics package separating the parachute from the capsule. So that's a relief. Okay, and here we go. Okay, booster sep is fine. And the rocket continues. Telemon 5. And the capsule is Vimes R for Vimes Rescue, actually. Uh, that R is not for Relina because even though we do have the Gina avionics package and the and the RL-10 stage. I guess it's sort of a Relina stage, but not quite the same as the one we've been using for the satellite launches and the probe to the moon. Probably there's something wrong here. Yeah. This should be up there. But so far what I've heard about version 1.0 has me excited, so um, I'm planning to live stream the career mode. I'm gonna try out career mode in uh, 1.0 and I've started doing stuff on Twitch, mainly testing. Not for this series, but for my non-career mode series like uh, Today in Space History, the Towards, uh, what is it, uh, Looking Forward, Looking Forward. Looking Forward and uh, some of the other things I plan to do outside of career mode, I've been uh, just just the past couple of days I started uh, looking to Twitch because I normally do that sort of testing on my own anyway. I just uh, so no video gets recorded of it, so I decided it'd be fine to live stream that part since live streams sort of have a different pace to them, and uh, that pace is more conducive to uh, showing that stuff rather than YouTube videos where it, that, that sort of thing, the testing and building process tends to be too tedious for YouTube videos. So I think I'll be doing more of that over there. Again, this series, all the testing occurs in the series itself because it's career mode and that's sort of the rule of career mode. But yep, yeah. and so I'm going to probably try out career mode in 1.0 uh, by streaming and that's because I'm thinking that my stock series oh hold on and that's where the game crashed I should have known better I should not have built the stuff you see I normally after building something in the VAB quit out and then come back in before trying to launch but uh, I did not do that this time and and the game crashed because of RAM issues Hopefully that's going to be something that we won't have to deal with as much in 1.0, but who knows. Not expecting anything about that. Don't want to be disappointed. Alright, but uh, here we go again. I'll try and skip more of the launch because we saw that we went through the region of heating just fine. Let me get some distance so I don't blow out my ears. Here we go. Okay, we're once again getting close to booster set here. Uh, 
Okay, booster set. Very good. And so we pick things up where we left off. So yeah, as I had been saying, I just a couple of days ago I started uh, trying out stuff on Twitch and all I've been doing is space shuttle re-entry testing with the CSS shuttle. Um, with the realism overhaul configs with the one exception that I threw in a, a B9 reaction wheel because I wasn't entirely confident about keeping the nose up through re-entry. It's for my Today in Space History series so it's uh, uh, I want to be able to fly the shuttle without too much of a hassle. I uh, fly and bring it back down. And that's the whole re-entry testing part. I want to be able to bring it back down properly for the sake of that series. But uh, we'll have to see. I'm uh, Last last attempt I was six degrees off from Cape Canaveral. I haven't done too many tests with it. So uh, six degrees is not horrible, but uh, certainly not what you want. If I can get, get it within one or two degrees of Cape Canaveral, well, let's say one degree of Cape Canaveral, I should be able to uh, turn around and uh, land there. But we'll see. The aerodynamics seem okay. I do have a little bit of a trouble with the rudder occasionally just uh, flying off at some points uh, when I don't think it should, but it's probably because of aerodynamic stress while it's deflecting, I don't know. I'll have to f take a further look at that. But yep, so that's all I've been doing on Twitch so far. Just uh, re-entry testing with that. But I intend to expand those activities. Uh, mainly to encompass the things that I do for these YouTube videos anyway. But I don't get to show. So, you know, that's stuff that, you know, people could watch and comment on and give me pointers while I'm trying to put uh, certain craft together. I'm sure that will be an interesting thing to see, uh, especially since I'm planning to put together a Mars mission using SLS and I want feedback on that especially. Somebody had requested that I uh, do a Mars, Mars mission using SLS so I thought it was a good idea. And I've been trying to put together a Mars mission for some time now. I, I still don't have uh, the NASA design reference document for what they plan to do with S SLS. I haven't seen that around, but, um, you know, I mean, there is a broad outline. Obviously, I'm not going to be relying on nuclear rockets the way Constellation, I think, used nuclear but I don't think that's going to be a thing in time. I don't see development of that. So just existing technologies plus a, a liquid methane uh, version of the RL-10, which I think is out there, the common extensible cryogenic engine, a throttleable methane burning version of the RL-10. That I think is certainly going to be ready in time. And basically that's the probably the biggest necessity is making sure we have a s relatively small methane burning engine. We can't have, you know, uh, SpaceX is developing the Raptor, but the Raptor is way too big for, for landing on Mars. And we need the methane burning one because methane is what we can produce on Mars. Methane and oxygen. We can get the carbon from the atmosphere. The atmosphere is just CO2. We could carry our hydrogen with us, or if it so happens that we find out there's a location with some water available, whether uh, accessible ice water, uh, I mean ice, or or perhaps liquid water, then that can be converted to produce the hydrogen through electrolysis. But in the end, you're going to have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen to work with. And that means that the easiest thing you can put together is methane and oxygen. Well, 
there's Orson. So we could potentially be not too far off from meeting up with him. Yeah, we're talking about covering 2,000 meters per second with the RL-10 stage. Probably that's going to take five minutes. Okay. Set. <laughs> Set. And ignite. Alright, ignition good. And now I can zoom in all the way because it's not so loud. We don't need to restrain our apoapsis. We are planning to head up to a pretty high target. And adjusting inclination is going to be easier when we're higher anyway. One thing I've done for my planned Mars, I, I did install for for a Mars mission and so that, so that I could put cathane and a whole bunch of other stuff that would be more suited to that into there. Of course it's a realism overhaul install, but I used this engine and added the common extensible cryogenic configs to this engine because otherwise the engine that has it normally is the AIES. It's one of the AIES engines that has, uh, that gets the common extensible cryogenic engine uh, config and that thing has a huge nozzle. Now that's good for ISP, but if we're gonna lift off of Mars, it's much better to have a smaller nozzle like this, than rather than the whole extended nozzle that that uh, model has. So I decided that the huge extended nozzle would be good for a transfer stage from Earth to Mars, but not very good for for trying to land something on Mars and take off again, because it's just too big and unwieldy. You have to somehow extend landing struts below all that and that was that was looking to be quite annoying so decided to just use this engine I mean this is in theory an RL10 so hopefully adding the methane burning configuration isn't gonna mess things up too much okay about 1000 meters per second left to go here so, call it about halfway through the RL-10's orbital burn. It's possible that if we burn further out, we can meet up with him at this ascending node. Okay, well, intersect to separation is decreasing. I'll wait until we get a minimum on that. Yeah, it's looking like we could meet well, pretty close to him at, at the ascending node there. Oh. Oh, we lost connection. Well, okay. Could be worse. Alright. I'll take that particular loss of connection. Okay, let's proceed to, I mean, of course, with the with the rendezvous occurring pretty close to the ascending node, I, strictly speaking, don't need to do an inclination correction right now. We could wait until we get there in order to match speeds with him. But I guess there's no harm in doing it. We'll have connection through South Africa there. I think the RCS ports are overpowered. Um, no operational SAS modules and no pilots on board. Huh. That's interesting. I wasn't expecting that one. I wonder what that portends. Should have added one of those I think those point two here uh, I'll have smart ASS point at that. It's gonna use a lot of RCS, but I guess smart ASS is sort of circumventing that. I should have added one of those I think those little point two 
ton modules. You know, the ones I've been having trouble with. Probably would do the trick. Okay, uh, stop that. Okay, uh, let's see how our stability is. It says very stable. Alright. Let's take RCS off and now point at node. Hopefully we can use the engine gibbling for that. There's no actual throttle on this. It's just pretending. We're doing it a little bit early but that's because I'm afraid of connection and also the stability. So just taking advantage of it being in this situation right now. I'm gonna actually turn off the RCS on the pod so it keeps its HTP which is in danger of depleting here if we use it too much. It's not strictly necessary. The the little RCS ports that we've got on the service module are at the center mass for that part. Well, now we're losing what little light we had. Yeah, I know, ambient uh, light adjustment. Yes, keep forgetting that. Engine's still very stable. Now we know it goes unstable. It's just gonna pick the most inconvenient time to do it, I'm sure. It knows I've got enough stuff to to stabilize it, so it's just gonna lull me into a false sense of security. Okay. Again, uh, even though it makes the throttling sound, and even though I was moving the throttle as if it could throttle, it doesn't throttle. I don't want to give that false impression. We seem to be within a good distance. Relative inclination is fine. Alright, alright, we're going after our Kerbal. Orson Kerbin, we're on our way. Oh. Oh, that's weird. Our periapsis was actually very low, huh? I should have paid more attention to that, actually. Did this a little bit too late. Way, way late. I didn't realize that it's gonna be, it's gonna be like this. Okay, well, set and ignite. All right. Well, this is why we have all this delta V on the service module. But uh, yeah, I think we're gonna need to find another place to catch up with him. We're not gonna be able to do it here. It says only four days of charge. Well, we're sort of pointing at the sun, aren't we? Well, yeah, I, I think we could point better for our solar panels. Obviously, what I'm concerned about that with is uh, if we were tr going to try and send a Kerbal around the moon. Of course, in that case, we could probably dump the Agena avionics package and save a lot of the electric charge. Normally my rendezvous around Earth are much more much more precise than this. I picked a very odd way to meet up with this particular target. Really, if uh, if the RCS was powered the way it should be, with only one quarter of its normal power. I wouldn't have to even turn on fine controls with this particular pod. Wish it would kill rotation without doing this sort of thing. Let's see if caps lock will work now. Okay. Okay. All right, looks like we're zeroed out. Let's go to caps lock to kill rotation. Looks like rotation is killed. Let me go over to Orson. 
Uh, hope I can control him regardless of whatever that says. Uh, okay. Uh, I don't need fine controls here. I uh, do need him to face the right way. I think the... Oh, the hatch is over there. Why are we rotating? Hey. Ah, oh, darn it. Come on. Oh, it's it's trying to face you. Okay, uh, hold on. Actually, uh, just face prograde. How about that? Okay, I'll take it. Okay, you rotate so that the hatch is in the right direction. Alright. Stay there. Okay, come on. So that was the problem. It was trying to keep facing him and that caused all sorts of havoc. Okay, well, EV report. Okay, keep data, board. Gotta do that while you're out here, right? Okay, so, um, let's see us off. Orson Kerman, you can. Nope, you're not an operational SAS module or a pilot. You should have told me you weren't a pilot. That. that complicates matters just a little bit. Gonna go to 65. I think based on our previous efforts, it should be all right. And well, here's the moment of truth because I'm gonna have to dump the service module. Let's go retrograde. I guess we can wait until we're like 150 kilometers. What's the info on the parachute? Did I... Well, pre-deployment altitude is 0.3 atmospheres. Could arm it now, I guess. Yep, okay. Well, it's armed just in case. Okay, and... We'll, we'll enable these ports after we... Dis dispense with it. Okay, here we go. Okay, enable RCS and let's let's have fine control on and then RCS. Okay. Now I'm going to set this for descent mode. We'll see how that works out. Well, not much of a tilt to this capsule in descent mode. Descent mode active. Well, I guess this is it. Ablative shielding is... It's really melting away out of trickle to keep us safe. Must be a way to turn that up, right? I'd, I'd like it to be flying off, not 0 0.02, more like 0 .1, 0 0.1 at least. And with the commensurate uh, temperature savings, of course. Okay, but it looks safe. G-forces have peaked out. Didn't look like we got past 5. Let's see. 
Okay, had me worried for a sec there, but full parachute deployment is successful. And we're at a okay descent rate. Okay, uh, better recover before he sinks. It looks pretty bad right now. Come on. Come on. Aw, oh, come on. Auto saving. This this is pretty bad. Hold on. Uh, we sort of boost ourselves up somehow. Ladies and gentlemen, we're we're in a bit of trouble here. Come on, let me recover him. I'm afraid that if I leave him, he's gonna be disappeared. I mean, it gives me the recover vessel button, it's just not recovering him. Maybe if I go to map, I mean, this is a unlikely possibility. Nope. Okay, well, all I can do is head to Space Center and try and recover him from there, but... Uh-oh, it's not letting me go to Space Center. Okay, well, I'm gonna have to quit the game and we'll have to see whether Orson is still recoverable or not. Okay, there's something in flight, there's something orbiting Kerbin, there's no, oh, there's a splashdown, hold on, let's just recover from here. Okay, EVA report, so that means, yes, Orson Kerman has been recovered, one experience point gained, uh, we recovered the pod for those funds. Uh, a fair distance away from the KSC, but I'm not too bothered about that, uh, especially since I don't know which location they're even measuring from. Yeah, okay, so I guess we have been successful. What is this? I don't have debris on. Oh, uh, everything has a communication, yeah, uh, not a communication device, but, uh, but a controller. Let, let me just take a look at what they are. Yeah, so this is actually the the RL10 stage, and because it's got the Gina on, it's still sort of active. It's, it's still got a connection somehow. Does this? It has 300 kilometer range. Way weird. So let me just quickly check. Yes, that contract was complete. We actually did it within that budget. Uh, but we've got some significant space junk now, don't we? Now, instead of just space junk that is uh, random debris like all these, and this is quite a lot already, we've actually got space junk that has guidance and communication. And and this piece should come down eventually. Uh, this, yeah, this piece should come down. Let, let me take a look at it. Yeah, this is actually our our service module. Let's just make sure that this comes down one less piece of debris. And we'll end it with the service module presumably exploding, right? We... what the heck just happened? Uh... No. Whoa. Whoa. Why did I suddenly zoom out? I was just uh, going to contracts, going over here sudden zoom out for for no reason okay well this this is definitely crashing I hope we miss South America uh, no not so much actually um, citizens of Brazil you might be in a bit of a trouble wait we still have control over this don't we can we get like prograde and this is prograde, right? Okay. Um, I think we can do something about this. Let's use. I mean, even though it's not going to be accurate, let's just 
show landing prediction here. Okay. That's definitely all Atlantic. It's not actually gonna land, it should explode in midair, but... So I must now apologize for polluting the ocean, of course. I could put it into orbit, but uh, the whole point was to avoid more space junk. It's very close to orbital velocities, as you can see. We do have the delta v to put it into orbit. So yep, we have we will dispose of our our service module over the Atlantic Ocean safely, without any concerns. All right. So as this gets destroyed, I will say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.